Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Birmingham. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are today and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. If you are new to our community and have questions or want to learn more, I invite you to join me next week, the 24th, after service in our Zoom coffee hour to answer your questions and to learn more about our church. To all who are here this morning, welcome home. Good morning. Here are this morning's announcements. If you would like to participate or comment on our service, especially during our sharing of joys and sorrows, please use the chat feature in YouTube. This week, we will begin our seven-week series on Leonardo da Vinci, and each individual who wants to participate will need to pick up one of our carefully curated boxes. Please plan to pick that up uh, from the church as soon as possible. If you cannot pick one up, please call the church office and we will have one mailed to you, including our out-of-state folks. This will be a great way of connecting with others and deepening ourselves with spiritual practices, no matter where you are on your journey. If you'd like to join us for the Care and Share Social Hour, it will take place on Zoom this Tuesday the 19th at 6 30 p.m. We'd love to see you and Lynn Stafford will lead a virtual memoir writing class on January 27th. Please sign up through the church office and other announcements. Please check them out. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Madeline Fralia and I am so excited to be interning for UUCB Ham this January. Um, a little bit about me, I am a junior at Birmingham Southern College. I am majoring in Global and Comparative Studies with a minor in Religion. And I am originally from a little town in Northwest Louisiana called Natchitoches. Um, if you've ever seen the original Steel Magnolias movie with Dolly Parton, then you've seen my hometown. <laughs> Um, still looks exactly the same, has not changed looks wise since the 80s, but um, yeah, that's where I'm from. Um, I lived in Baltimore for four years for high school. Um, I went to boarding school up there and now I'm back down south. And um, I'm really excited to be working closely with Reverend Julie and the Justice Committee and everything, working on creating a social justice organization database for um, the church and then other ministry groups uh, around town. So yeah, um, I'm really excited to be doing this. i um, really looking forward to seeing this project come into fruition and um, yeah, I <laughs> uh, hope everybody has a good day. Prelude prepares us for worship.
the lighting of the chalice. Let us wake up, not just from the Sunday morning exhaustion, from the wish for a few more drowsy minutes in bed. Let us wake up to this world we live in, to its beauty and wonder, and also to its tragedy and pain. We must wake up to this reality that not all in our world have what we do, however much or little that is. We must wake up to the idea that our wholeness, our lives are only complete as the lives of those around us, of those of which we are inextricably tied to in a great web of mutuality, of which all of us are part. We must hashtag stay woke in the words of our friends and colleagues involved in the Black Lives Matter, working every day for racial justice in our country. Let us wake up. Let us stay awake. Let us hashtag stay woke. And now in this time and place, let us worship together. church is supported by those who call our church home and by those who support the efforts of our church to change our world for the better. We share our cash plate every Sunday with organizations whose work reflect UU values to care for marginalized persons, advocate for real and systemic change, defend our environment, and promote justice and equity for all. This month's Share the Plate recipient is Alabama Arise a statewide nonprofit, nonpartisan coalition of congregations, 
organizations and individuals united in their belief that people in poverty are suffering because of state policy decisions. Through Arise, groups and individuals join together to promote policies to improve the lives of Alabamians with low incomes. Arise provides a structure in which Alabamians can engage in public debates to promote the common good. This time, during this time of social distancing and online worship, please know that church expenses continue. Therefore, we very much appreciate your continuing to pay your pledge or offer your donation by either mailing a check to the church office or using PayPal or Venmo. Our Venmo account is at UUCBHAM. Please designate whether your offering is for UUCB or Alabama Arise. Thank you for your generous support of our church and our Share the Plate recipient. May we give in love and in hope. As we enter our meditative space this morning, I invite you to lift up all of those in our community who are grieving or suffering or recovering from COVID or struggling with the anxiety that the events of the last 10 days have wrought upon our country. 
I invite you to hold one another close and lift one another up using the chat feature in YouTube by speaking it aloud or by hearing it on your heart. Please give voice to what is on your heart today. Please hear this spoken meditation written this morning by Rabbi Emily Cohen, followed by a moment of silence. Source of all, merciful one, you who gave us wisdom and understanding, you who placed within our hearts pounding the possibility of pursuit of justice, you who granted us keen senses and constant memory and each breath of life. May you give us, all of us, through the 202 score and five year red, white, and blue haze, the ability to see the truth. America has never been great. May this truth be made plain soon and in our lifetimes. May we place our feet on the path to remedy. May you build within us the right kind of stubbornness to craft John Lewis's good trouble, to pursue Dr. King's dream, to dissent even if society remains unready, to align ourselves against our blood-stained foundations, to speak out falsehoods with the unbroken blast of the shofar, to listen to those who know the same stories in another point of view, to listen to those who have fought for what we seek before we knew to seek it, to listen to our heartbeat, to listen to our condoning silence, to listen, Shema, all of we sacred wrestlers May we begin the work of making America anew. May you give us the strength to let, that's just the way it is, fall away as an excuse. May you grant us the courage to sit with our culpability and our losses and our shame and be unafraid. May you help us to seek not greatness for its own sake, but great gentleness and growth, cradled in love, together, generation by generation, with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our essence, with all that animates our souls. And let us all say, Amen.
And let us all say together, Amen and blessed be. Will the children please come forward? For this time for all ages this morning, I just want to emphasize that this is for all ages. This piece of our service is our introduction to our Da Vincian principle this week. Today we're talking about being curious. One of the things I miss about being with you all in person and having you gather at the front of the sanctuary during this time is that you are always so full of questions. And your parents and your grandparents and all of those folks in the church know that you cultivate curiosity so well. And so I really hope that you will be a model for us this week about what we are curious about. Let's hear from some of our friends at the church what they are curious about this week. I'm just very curious about the vaccine for COVID. If it works, happy, happy day. We don't need to wear masks no more. (laughs) Hi, I'm Patty Stillman. Reverend Julie asks that we record something we're curious about. I have a long list of things that I want to learn about, to investigate and explore. But the thing that's at the top of the list, when we can get together again, I'd like to visit parts of the world that I've never been to. I want to go to India, to China, to Italy. I'm the defenses. I'm curious about the defenses of animals, how they work and how their retractable claws work and stuff. I'm curious about owls and how they turn their neck around like all the way back without moving their whole back. Like that's really crazy to me. But I mean, I'm also curious about owls, how their eye vision is really good at night. Speaking of my eye vision, I can see kind of good for some reason. But, I mean, that's all I really want to know about owls. I loved hearing all of the things that our friends at church are curious about. And I can't wait to hear what you are curious about. This week, in our Da Vinci booklet, we are talking about curiosity. And you have three different options for how you can explore curiosity in your own life. The first is to journal, and maybe you have a journal of your own, or maybe you use the notebook included in your Da Vinci box. But either way, you're going to pick one of these topics, a bird in flight, flowing water, the human body, a landscape, reflected light, a knot, or braid. And in your journal, you're going to ask at least 10 questions about it. Now, I know for many of us, maybe one of those topics doesn't speak to you, but something else does. The point of the exercise is to write 10 questions about one subject. You don't have to worry about the answers. Just be curious. Cultivate that within yourself. The second option is the challenge exercise, and that is to download Duolingo on your phone or pull it up on your computer and learn a new language. One of my friends was helping out at a meal for the houseless community and realized that she needed to learn Spanish. So she downloaded Duolingo and did it every day for the next year. And she was able to have some basic conversations when she went to help her community. So I hope that if that's something that interests you, that you will choose a language that works for you and help stimulate that part of your brain. The third option is our connection piece. And this is where I invite you to sit down with someone you love and ask them to help you reflect on some questions. 
to reflect on what are my strengths and my best qualities? What are my weaknesses or blind spots concerning the emotions of other people? What can I do to be more helpful or more sensitive? With the idea that you're not going to comment after they tell you, and you're going to journal about your feelings in your notebook. All of these ways are some ideas about how you can cultivate curiosity in your life this week. It is so important to ask those big questions, and I encourage you to continue asking questions of those in your life, your parents, your teachers, your friends, all who love you, because cultivating questions and cultivating curiosity are really important for our brain and our reality that we are a part of a much bigger picture, an interdependent web of life. Cultivate curiosity this week. I can't wait to see all of the things you come up with. Let us sing our song together. A reading by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied to a single garment of destiny. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. There are some things in our social system to which all of us ought to be maladjusted. Hatred and bitterness can never cure the disease of fear. Only love can do that. We must evolve for all human conflict, a method which re rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Before it is too late, we must narrow the gaping chasm between our proclamations of peace and our lowly deeds, which precipitate us and perpetuate war. One day we must come to see that peace is not merely a distant goal that we seek, but a means by which we arrive at that goal. We must pursue peaceful ends through peaceful means. We shall hew out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. After we watched the grueling ABC News special called 24 Hours Assault on the Capitol about the events of January 6th, Josh and I needed something a little less traumatic to watch, even though it was already much past our bedtime. So we played an episode of Wrecked, a sitcom based on a hypothetical plane wreck where survivors now must navigate life on an uncharted island. Now that I describe it out loud, it really doesn't sound less traumatic. But... It inspired me to consider, what could I offer as a useful set of skills on a shipwrecked island without the benefit of Google and resources at my disposal? I could offer a funeral for those who didn't make it. I could teach some history or civics or explain the process of death in detail. Nothing particularly useful or practical. What skills would you bring to a shipwrecked island? I've mentioned before that when I interviewed our board of trustees with a similar hypothetical question, I learned that our board is definitely the crew you want to have on a shipwrecked island with you. Between the nine of them, they can build weapons and use them, they can sort between edible and non-animal food and plants. They can tie knots. They can build water filtration systems and so much more. Questions like this, scenarios about 
hypothetical and statistically unlikely experiences are part of cultivating curiosity. Our da Vinci notebooks and our spiritual practice boxes are all about asking these hypothetical questions to make us reflect, connect, and wonder. Some of you will answer seriously, and others will answer with humor. But however you do these exercises, these answers, whatever you come up with, are uniquely you. I crafted these booklets with the hopes of challenging all of us to dig deeper in our own ways, in the ways we answer and create. As Leonardo da Vinci teaches us through reading his notebooks, it doesn't matter whether our questions lead to anything productive. The mere act of asking questions, even without seeking answers, is important. We are naturally curious, but our, curious, our curiosity is often limited to our own bodies. How is my health? Why does it hurt there? Or our curiosity is limited to those closest to us. How was your day? What would you like for dinner? Curiosita, the first principle of Leonardo da Vinci that we begin to explore this week, teaches us to be more observant, more in the moment, and allows our mind to wander. To allow our curiosity to go beyond our own orbit. <clears throat> How are things made? What evolutionary process brought out this trait in one plant and that trait in another? How did this apple go from a seed to my kitchen? What inspired this artist? Why does my cat always want to cuddle those moments right before my alarm goes off. Reverend Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was one of those curious people. Dr. King had a dream where he wondered about a future that was not yet manifest. He dreamed of a world where folks of different races could live in harmony. He wondered how we could create a system of guaranteed income for all Americans. As he once said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Dr. King's mission was to teach us empathy, to care for others as much as we care for ourselves. He spoke in 1967 about how the black community continues to suffer from the humiliation of legal segregation. Dr. King challenges us to reach beyond our own circle, to get outside of our orbit, to ask ourselves, what is life like for that person over there? How does the world react differently when that person who is different than I goes shopping or is on the job or has an encounter with law enforcement or shows up with guns to our nation's capital? Ten days ago, we saw in real time how the world still does not treat all people the same, in case we had any doubts. We saw how the Black Lives Matter gathering at the Capitol had 316 arrests in one day, whereas as of this moment, only 70 have been arrested for the events on January 6th. Our curiosity with hypothetical questions has been quite overtaxed in the last few months. If you had ever wondered before last year 
How would I react during a global pandemic? What would I do during the civil rights movement? Who would I be if I was at the Capitol on January 6th, 2021? All of these questions, all of these wanderings, now have a basis in reality. We can look back and consider answers to those questions that we could have never imagined in 2019. In 2019. Even as I write this sermon, I'm reflecting and wondering what will happen over the next few days. Whether Dr. King's dream of justice rolling down like waters, a quote from the prophet Amos, will be realized, or whether we will be even further up the creek without a paddle. Both Dr. King and Da Vinci, in their own ways, challenged us to be curious curious about who we want to be, about our environment, about those who we surround ourselves with, about how we want to treat the world. Like many of you, perhaps, I wondered if I knew someone who was running up the Capitol steps 10 days ago. I knew at least one person who was there. I wanted to understand what would compel a person to do such a thing. For me, it all boils down to this. Our country has systemically and systematically devalued civics and social studies education for decades because some folks in power believe that an ignorant voter is a malleable one. We don't teach our students about the Tulsa race riots, Jim Crow, slavery, the colonization of indigenous lands, the truth about how Hawaii became a part of the United States. We don't teach our kids how the government is supposed to work, how important each vote is, what democracy looks like, and what democracy does not look like. We don't teach our students the mistakes we've made as a country, the amends we need to make together. We need to teach our children that the Capitol and the White House and so many other important buildings were built by enslaved persons. So that when white people expect that we should be able to enter those buildings at any time and with any intention, we are perpetuating the notion that something is ours when it is not ours. That building belongs to America. And she is larger than all of us. And at the same time, only exists because we all participate and keep her so. As I've discussed this issue with several folks of color over the last few days, I've had to reckon with the fact that not a single one of them was surprised. Not a single one of them was shocked or appalled because white folks colonizing is so normal to them. Because folks of color are always cleaning up after white people's messes. I hope you'll read the article about Representative Andy Kim, who personally got down on his hands and knees to clean up the rotunda 
after the mob. I hope you'll watch the videos of the Capitol maintenance crew, most of which are people of color cleaning up after the insurrection. Those maintenance workers deserve our undying appreciation, as well as the journalists who put their necks on the line to capture footage of this unprecedented event. Just like the healthcare workers who put their lives on the lines every day, trying to stem the tide of a virus that remains out of control, because we have yet to learn how to come together as a country to stop a threat to all of us. This problem of systemic racism, these folks who stormed our capital, is not going away. And yet, we cannot obsess over these people. No matter what, Joe Biden will take the oath of office on January 20th with Kamala Harris right after him. We will eventually welcome Reverend Warnock and Mr. Ossoff to the Senate, narrowly providing some balance of power in our government again. We will eventually have unity, we hope, but we must ensure that our unity does not come at the cost of other people's humanity. Our LGBTQ community, our immigrants, and especially our folks of color. And when this problem appears again, when, not if, when it appears again, no matter what, we have to remember that the arc of the moral universe is long, but that it bends toward justice. We as a country ended slavery, ended legal segregation, at least the obvious kind, we still have work to do, and our reckoning with our colonization and our racism and our institutions of oppression Women just celebrated a hundred years of the right to vote. We made it through all of these eras with major scars. But eventually we bent that arc for justice and we will do it again. Focus this week on seeking out the stabilizers in your life the rocks that you can count on when times are challenging and the world is shaking. I hope our community can be one of those stabilizers for you. We need to be grounded so when the tides of injustice and bigotry and evil are assaulting our news feeds, that we know who we are whose we are, and that we are not alone. Our Da Vinci notebooks are one of the ways that we can ground ourselves during this time. We need to remind ourselves and to teach our children that questions are worth asking, even if we never have answers. May we venture into our week, cultivating curiosity about ourselves, our world, and most importantly, those around us. May our curiosity lead to empathy, understanding, and advocacy for those who need our allyship. May we fight for our democracy, aiming for a world with liberty and justice for all, with the empathy of Dr. King and the curiosity of Da Vinci. May you be held in the heart of community until we are joyfully reunited in person. Amen and blessed be. Please join us in our closing hymn, 
found in your order of service. <clears throat> Morally, I was led to nonviolence because I felt that it was the best moral way to deal with the problem. We were seeking to establish a just society. And uh, it was my feeling then, and it is my feeling now, that uh, violence is certainly much more uh, socially destructive, and it creates many more social problems than it solves. So I was led to nonviolence for deep moral reasons, and I turned to it because I felt that it was the morally excellent way to deal with the problem of racial injustice in our country. No freedom, the wise men said, let justice roll down, roll down. When the poor cry out for shelter and bread, let justice roll down like a mighty stream. Oh, children, don't you get we re-walk together, believe in the dream. When the way gets rough, we'll make a new way. Let justice roll down like a mighty stream Hatred will never drive out hate Let love roll down, roll down Remember our hearts can make us great Let love roll down like a mighty stream Oh, children, don't you get we re-walk Together, believe in the dream When the way gets rough We'll make a new way And let your love roll down Like a mighty stream When brutality threatens Our daughters and sons Let peace roll down Roll down May our voices rise up louder than the guns Let peace roll down like a mighty stream Oh, children, don't you get we re-walk together Believe in the dream When the way gets rough, we'll make a new way And let peace roll down like a mighty stream Step one by one, let justice roll down, roll down. They can kill the prophet, but the dream lives on. Let justice roll down like a mighty stream. Oh, children, don't you carry me walk together and even dream. When the way gets rough, we'll make a new way. I turned to it because I felt that it was the morally excellent way to deal with the problem of racial injustice in our country. The extinguishing of the chalice we shall overcome when we can truly celebrate the diversity and contributions and talents offered by all people, we shall overcome hatred and prejudice and oppression. When we can truly extend our hands to one another in loving acceptance, we shall overcome the past that haunts us now. Living in peace and freedom, we shall overcome the wrongs that have happened and the debts left unpaid. Let us join together in that commitment to overcome. Let us say together, Amen.